In the twilight of the 1970s, West Berlin stood as a spectral city, its urban landscape etched with the scars of a divided nation. The looming presence of the Berlin Wall cast an eerie shadow, a tangible reminder of political strife and ideological discord. Cobblestone streets wound through desolate neighborhoods, flanked by concrete monoliths that seemed to whisper tales of a bygone era. Graffiti-laden remnants of the war-ravaged past stood juxtaposed against avant-garde art installations, encapsulating a city caught in a paradoxical dance between history and a relentless pursuit of the future. Amidst the somber backdrop, a city inextricably bound by its Cold War circumstances, West Berlin's cultural pulse beat with an unconventional cadence. The air crackled with a sense of creative urgency, as artists sought solace and inspiration within the city's enigmatic embrace. Studios nestled in the heart of this urban labyrinth became crucibles of experimentation, birthing sounds that echoed the dichotomy of a city suspended between two worlds. It was against this haunting backdrop that musical alchemists sought refuge, forging sonic landscapes that mirrored the fragmented soul of the city. The station-to-station -station era is a fascinating chapter in Bowie's career, characterized by a convergence of creativity, personal struggles, and a determination to break new ground musically. It is often seen as a bridge between Bowie's glam rock era and the subsequent Berlin trilogy. The Isolat tour to support the album was marked by elaborate stage setups, innovative lighting, and Bowie's increasingly unpredictable behavior on and off stage. Bowie's interviews during this period were often erratic and sometimes contradictory. His statements and behavior fueled rumors and speculation, adding to the enigmatic aura surrounding him. The chaotic energy of the station-to-station -station period eventually led Bowie to seek a change of environment. In 1976, he moved to West Berlin, a decision influenced by a desire to escape the excesses of Los Angeles, find stability, and focus on his creative pursuits in a new cultural context. David Bowie's fascination with Berlin dates back to his early exposure to German Expressionist art and Fritz Lang's iconic film Metropolis during his time at Bromley Technical High School in London. This encounter sparked what Bowie described as an obsession with the emotionally charged and angst-ridden works of Expressionist artists and filmmakers, with Berlin being their spiritual home. As Bowie delved deeper into the ethos of Expressionism, he seamlessly integrated its influences into his early artistic endeavors, particularly during his collaboration with Lindsay Kemp's Mime Company in the late 1960s. The emergence of German electronic band Tangerine Dream, and especially the solo work of its founder, Edgar Froese, captivated Bowie. Froese's 1975 album, Ypsilon in Malaysian Pale, left a profound impact on Bowie's creative process, notably shaping his 1976 album, Station to Station. What struck Bowie most about Froese's work was the unpredictability of the compositions, a quality he was determined to incorporate more into his own music. This admiration and a quest for musical innovation prompted Bowie to follow Edgar Froese to Berlin. In doing so, Bowie immersed himself in the city's vibrant and avant-garde cultural scene, setting the stage for a pivotal chapter in his artistic evolution. Bowie is quoted as saying, I liked the idea of the Berlin Wall because, at that time, I felt that it was always necessary to be in a place where there was tension. This gives us some insight into his mindset and the reasons behind his attraction to Berlin. It reveals a profound connection between his creative impulses and the environment in which he thrived. He sought out tension and conflict as a catalyst for his artistic expression. The Berlin Wall, a symbol of political division, represented a physical manifestation of the ideological and geopolitical struggles of the time. Bowie was drawn to this atmosphere of tension, viewing it as a fertile ground for creativity and innovation. By choosing to be in West Berlin, Bowie deliberately placed himself in a location marked by factional elements, both musically and artistically. The city's divided nature and the clash of different cultural and artistic influences provided Bowie with a dynamic backdrop against which he could challenge conventions and explore new avenues in his work. Bowie later recounted about his time in Berlin. I was very lucky to be there at that time, mainly because it was undergoing artistically its greatest renaissance since the Weimar days of the 1920s, when it was definitely the cultural gateway to Europe. When I was there, the whole new German Expressionist period had started and all of the German electronic bands were starting to come down to Berlin to work. Berlin was a strange singular place. After the Second World War, when it was just an island in the middle of East Germany, all of the industry and all of the big business moved out of Berlin, leaving behind factories and warehouses that were empty. 
So what happened is that students and artists moved in. So the whole place became like a workshop and it was just a wonderful place to be for that. David Bowie's friendship with Iggy Pop during the 1970s was not only a personal bond, but also a creative partnership that left a significant impact on both artists' careers. Bowie saw potential in Iggy's raw and energetic approach to rock music, and Iggy, in turn, appreciated Bowie's innovative style and willingness to push artistic boundaries. Bowie invited Iggy Pop to join him in Berlin, where they both sought a more stable and creative environment. The move marked a pivotal moment for both artists as they entered a phase of reinvention and artistic exploration. During their time in Berlin, Bowie played a significant role in Iggy Pop's musical career. Bowie co-wrote and produced Iggy's albums The Idiot and Lust for Life. These albums showcased a departure from Iggy's earlier sound, incorporating elements of electronic and ambient music. The collaboration between Bowie and Iggy Pop was marked by creative synergy. Bowie's influence helped Iggy Pop reinvent his sound, incorporating new textures and experimental elements. The collaboration also had a reciprocal impact on Bowie's music. Iggy's raw energy and punk sensibility influenced Bowie's approach, particularly in the edgier and more stripped-down elements found in his albums, including low. For example, the staccato guitar chords coupled with Bowie's assertive delivery give the song Breaking Glass from Low, an edgy and punk-influenced quality. The use of repetition and a stripped-down arrangement contributes to its raw and immediate feel. David Bowie's move to Berlin marked a significant and transformative period in his career. Berlin offered Bowie a fresh start and a creative landscape different from the mainstream music scenes in the United States. The city's avant-garde and experimental atmosphere appealed to Bowie's artistic sensibilities. The German rock scene, particularly Krautrock, played a role in shaping Bowie's musical direction. Bands like Nu were at the forefront of the Krautrock movement, known for their minimalist and repetitive rhythms. Bowie embraced this approach, incorporating harmonic and rhythmic elements into his music. After wrapping up the London show on May 7, 1976, David Bowie caught up with Brian Eno backstage, the former Roxy Music keyboardist and conceptual mastermind. Their occasional encounters date back to 1973. Eno, post-Roxy Music, had ventured into ambient territory with two solo albums in 1975, Another Green World and Discreet Music. Bowie, notably, found comfort in the mesmerizing sounds of Discreet Music during the American leg of the tour. Biographers Mark Spitz and Hugo Wilkin later identified another green world as a significant influence on the sonic landscape Bowie sought for, low. Christopher Sanford also underscored Eno's taking Tiger Mountain by strategy as a noteworthy muse. Bowie and Eno deepened their exploration, tapping into the world of Krautrock, drawing inspiration from German acts like Tangerine Dream, New, Kraftwerk and Harmonia. Eno had prior collaborations with Harmonia and Bowie's Krautrock fascination left its mark on Station to Station, particularly its title track. United by their passion for Krautrock, Bowie and Eno committed to staying connected after this pivotal meeting. Eno's experimental and ambient approach significantly influenced the sound of the Berlin Trilogy. Their collaboration allowed Bowie to explore new musical territories and break away from his previous sonic boundaries. Low was a significant departure from his previous work. One of the key aspects of the album's innovative sound was the use of new and unconventional instruments. For example, a string synthesizer is prominently featured on several tracks, providing lush and atmospheric sounds. It contributed to the album's ambient and electronic textures, particularly in tracks like Speed of Life and Sound and Visions. Bowie also used the Mini Moog synthesizer to create various electronic sounds and textures throughout the album. The Mini Moog's versatility allowed for the production of a wide range of sounds, from bass lines to ethereal pads. Lowe saw the introduction of electronic percussion, a departure from traditional acoustic drum kits. Drum machines such as the Rhythmicon were used to create robotic and rhythmic patterns. This electronic approach was especially evident in tracks like A New Career in a New Town. While not a physical instrument, the use of Brian Eno's oblique strategies cards during the recording process influenced the album's experimental nature. These cards contained directives and random prompts that encouraged unconventional approaches to recording. Another interesting aspect of the album is the use of traditional instruments in non-traditional ways. For example, a harmonica was used on the song A New Career in a New Town. 
However, it was not used in a traditional blues or folk context. Instead, it was processed and integrated into the ambient and experimental landscape of the song. Low stands out as an album because it marked such a radical departure from David Bowie's previous work. Each song plays a distinctive role, contributing to the album's reputation as a pioneering work in the realms of electronic, ambient and alternative music. Speed of Life serves as a high-energy introduction to Low. Influenced by German electronic music, Bowie captures the dynamic spirit of urban life, reflecting the rapid pace of change during his time in Berlin. The tempo of Speed of Life is brisk, contributing to its dynamic and energetic feel. The rhythm features a driving pulse, propelled by a prominent drumbeat and rhythmic guitar patterns. The percussive elements create a sense of urgency and forward motion. A defining characteristic of Speed of Life is the prominent use of synthesizers. The synthesizer motif establishes the track's signature sound. The rapid arpeggios and electronic textures contribute to the song's futuristic and avant-garde quality. There are angular and rhythmic guitar patterns, played by Carlos Alomar. These guitar elements add a layer of edginess to the track and complement the electronic elements. The use of electronic processing and filtering techniques on the synthesizers adds to the futuristic atmosphere. Speed of Life serves as a compelling introduction to the experimental and avant-garde nature of Low. Its innovative use of synthesizers, rhythmic elements and electronic textures set the stage for the album's exploration of new sonic territories. The second song on the album is Breaking Glass. The song is driven by angular and staccato guitar riffs played by Carlos Alomar. These guitar patterns contribute to the edgy and dynamic character of the track, creating a sense of urgency. The lyrics are fragmented and disjointed, contributing to the overall sense of tension and unease. Bowie described the lyrics as a representation of inner and outer conflicts. Compared to some of the more complex and ambient tracks on Low, Breaking Glass stands out for its straightforward and stripped-down sonic approach. While Breaking Glass may not incorporate exotic or unique instruments, its significance lies in its departure from Bowie's earlier styles, embracing a more urgent and punk-influenced sound. What in the World presents a more conventional song structure compared to the album's experimental nature. The lyrics explore themes of disorientation and confusion, perhaps reflecting Bowie's own sense of displacement during his time in Berlin. Carlos Alomar's rhythmic and dynamic guitar riffs contribute significantly to the song's overall sound. While the guitar is a focal point, synthesizers and electronic percussion elements, including synthesized handclaps, are present, adding a layer of electronic experimentation. Sound and vision introduces a more ambient and introspective side. The song features lush string arrangements, a prominent piano, and Bowie's melancholic vocals. It's a departure from the high-energy tracks preceding it. With its dreamlike quality, sound and vision expresses a longing for connection and meaning. Bowie's use of imagery and sonic space creates a contemplative atmosphere, exploring themes of isolation and self-reflection. Categorized as a song fragment, its structure is both intricate and deliberate. The piece initiates as an instrumental, unfolding for 46 seconds with a rhythmic foundation. At 1 minute and 14 seconds, Brian Eno and Mary Hopkin introduce backing vocals, harmonizing with the primary guitar line. A somber saxophone played by Bowie himself enters shortly after, adding a darker dimension to the composition. Notably, Bowie's vocals deliberately delay their entrance, taking a significant 1 minute and 45 seconds to make their presence felt. This intentional delay, at Eno's urging, serves to defy conventional listener expectations. As the song progresses, various elements gradually layer, starting with the rhythm section, followed by a simulated string section generated by an ARP Selena synthesizer. The arrangement then incorporates backing vocals, brass instruments, and finally Bowie's distinctive voice creating a nuanced and evolving sonic landscape throughout the track. The piano and mock string section are immersed in studio effects, creating a complex auditory atmosphere. The saxophone undergoes a transformative treatment through Tony Visconti's harmonizer, lending it a distinct and altered character. Rhythmic nuances are introduced with the periodic appearance of a sizzle cymbal on the third beat of each bar, adding a subtle yet significant textural layer. The guitars pan to different channels, offer spatial diversity, with the main guitar line on the left and a mock reggae rhythm on the right. Sound and vision resonates emotionally with its exploration of themes like isolation and contemplation. The line, pale blinds drawn all day, nothing to read, nothing to say, paints a picture of solitude and monotony. 
the use of the color pale further accentuates a sense of emptiness and a lack of stimulation, contributing to the theme of isolation. The lyrics take an unexpected turn with the lines, Don't you wonder sometimes if sound and vision are the same? Here, Bowie introduces a philosophical dimension, questioning the interconnectedness of auditory and visual experiences. This line adds a layer of intellectual inquiry to the song, inviting listeners to contemplate the nature of perception and its intersections. The chorus, with its repetition of waiting for the gift of sound and vision, suggests a longing for inspiration or a transformative experience. The use of the word gift implies an anticipation of something beyond the ordinary, perhaps a moment of creative or spiritual revelation. Bowie's use of ambiguous storytelling allows for multiple interpretations, inviting listeners to engage with the song's themes in a way that feels personally meaningful. The song is a testament to Bowie's commitment to artistic renewal. In Berlin, he sought new creative directions, and sound and vision exemplifies his embrace of experimentation and risk-taking. Sound and Vision serves as a bridge between the two sides of the album. Its ambient and reflective quality creates a contemplative atmosphere that contrasts with the more rhythmically charged and dynamic tracks on the first side. It serves as a transitional piece which sets the stage for the instrumental and ambient exploration that unfolds on side two of the album. Always Crashing in the Same Car explores a more rock-oriented sound with prominent guitar work. The structure is dynamic, featuring shifts in intensity and mood. Inspired by Bowie's experiences in Los Angeles and his struggles with drug addiction, the song delves into themes of repetition and self-destructive patterns. The car metaphor symbolizes the cyclical nature of his challenges. Be My Wife is a straightforward rock song with a catchy melody, guitar-driven rhythm, and Bowie's emotive vocals. It is a departure from the electronic and ambient sounds. The lyrics reveal a plea for stability and connection, reflecting Bowie's personal life at the time. The simplicity of the song contrasts with the experimental nature of the album, offering a moment of vulnerability. The instrumental piece, A New Career in a New Town, features a repetitive and hypnotic motif driven by a harmonica and synthesizer. It creates a contemplative and atmospheric mood. This track represents a sonic departure, capturing the essence of new beginnings. It follows a minimalistic approach, emphasizing repetitive patterns and subtle shifts. The song creates an ambient and contemplative atmosphere, inviting the listener into a meditative space. The harmonica's melancholic tones contribute to the reflective mood of the piece. The title, A New Career in a New Town, suggests themes of renewal. This instrumental composition may represent a sonic interpretation of the idea of starting anew, aligning with Bowie's personal and artistic reinvention during his time in Berlin. Positioned between the more structured tracks on side one and the experimental pieces on side two of the album, A New Career in a New Town serves as a transitional piece. It bridges the rhythmic and dynamic qualities of the first side with the more ambient and experimental compositions that follow. One of the most experimental tracks, Wasawa, draws inspiration from Eastern European music. It features atmospheric synthesizers and an evocative mood. Wasawa is designed to capture the stark mood that David Bowie encountered during his visit to Warsaw the preceding year. Bowie had to temporarily step away from the recording sessions to handle legal affairs in Paris. During this hiatus, he tasked Brian Eno with creating a slow-paced composition imbued with emotional and almost religious undertones. The directive aimed to evoke the specific emotional resonance Bowie experienced in Warsaw. The resulting piece stands as a musical reflection of Bowie's response to the atmosphere of the city, offering a poignant expression of his sentiments during a significant juncture in his life. The division of Berlin by the Berlin Wall had a profound impact on the city's cultural and political landscape. Bowie, living in West Berlin, was witness to this physical and ideological separation. The instrumental nature of Warsaw allows listeners to interpret the music in the context of this political symbolism. The title refers to the capital of Poland. Warsaw is often seen as a tribute to the resilience of the Polish people, particularly the city of Warsaw, which faced significant challenges during World War II. The emotional resonance of the track reflects a sense of historical reflection and tribute to those who endured hardship. The reflective and contemplative tone of Wasawa aligns with Bowie's own period of self-discovery and personal introspection during his time in Berlin. The atmosphere of Berlin during Bowie's stay, including exposure to German expressionist art, likely contributed to the unique and eclectic soundscapes found in Wasawa. German expressionist art, 
including music, often embrace dissonance and unconventional harmonies to convey a sense of unease and emotion. Wasawa incorporates non-traditional scales and harmonic progressions, which contribute to the track's ethereal sound. The use of drones in octaves, the modulation from A major to A minor, and the subsequent transposition of the ABC motif to F sharp major highlight a departure from conventional tonal norms. Additionally, incorporating tape loops of orchestral instruments like cellos and flutes contributes to a non-traditional sonic palette. The modulation to E major and the thinning out of texture before Bowie's vocal entry further exemplify a departure from traditional harmonic progressions. The dissonant elements in the music can be seen as a representation of inner psychological states, reflecting the influence of expressionist themes on the composition. Warsawa exhibits cinematic qualities, evoking a sense of visual storytelling without the need for explicit narrative. It whispers of desolate landscapes. It's like a haunting fog over a forgotten city. The song's structure and sonic elements create a theatrical experience, allowing listeners to immerse themselves in a sonic journey that goes beyond conventional songwriting. This mirrors the dramatic and theatrical aspects often found in German expressionist art. The emotional ambiguity in the track aligns with the expressionist approach, allowing for multiple interpretations and personal connections. Art Decade continues the album's ambient and instrumental exploration with electronic textures and a dreamlike quality. The sparse arrangement allows for a focus on atmospheric soundscapes. The title suggests a reflection on the artistic movements of the past. Bowie's relocation to Berlin was marked by a period of personal and artistic reinvention, and this track reflects the creative atmosphere of the city. Like other tracks on side two, Art Decade heavily incorporates synthesizers and electronic effects and follows a minimalist approach, emphasizing repetitive patterns and subtle shifts. The minimalistic approach and fragmented sounds contribute to a sense of introspection, aligning with the broader themes of the album. Much of the instrumental suite on side two has a cinematic quality. Art Decade is no exception, and its use of ambient soundscapes could evoke imagery, contributing to a sense of storytelling without the need for explicit lyrics. As an instrumental piece, Art Decade allows for a high degree of interpretative freedom. Listeners can engage with the music on a personal level, deriving their own meanings and emotions from the atmospheric and abstract qualities of the track. Weeping Wall features a somber mood with its cascading piano lines and ambient textures. Influenced by minimalist composer Steve Reich, Bowie adapted the main melody from the traditional English ballad Scarborough Fair. The title Weeping Wall suggests a sense of sorrow or lamentation. While the music itself is open to interpretation, the title provides a suggestive framework for listeners to connect emotionally with the track. The piece employs a diverse set of instruments, including synthesizers, vibraphones, xylophones, and wordless vocals. The sonic landscape is designed to evoke feelings of frustration and confinement. The composition carries a thematic weight, aiming to convey the anguish and hardship associated with the presence of the Berlin Wall. The closing piece on the album is Subterraneans. Its soundscapes evoke a cinematic atmosphere reminiscent of Miles Davis in a silent way. It showcases Bowie on saxophone, along with Brian Eno's multi-layered synthesizers and reversed instrument sounds. Bowie's vocalizations largely wordless until the final 90 seconds add a haunting quality. Bowie personally linked the composition to the struggles faced by individuals in East Berlin during the Cold War. According to Bowie, the subtle jazz saxophones within the song serve as a poignant representation of the lingering memories of those caught in East Berlin after the separation. The personal connection Bowie drew between subterraneans and the struggles faced by individuals in East Berlin during the Cold War adds a poignant depth to the track. By infusing the composition with this historical and emotional resonance, Bowie elevates it beyond a mere musical piece, turning it into a sonic exploration of human experience and the echoes of history. Lowe stands as a masterpiece in popular music, a quiet revolution that whispers with profound innovation. Bowie, in his creative pilgrimage, crafted an opus where simplicity meets the sublime. The album, like a painter's subtle strokes on a canvas, blends electronic landscapes with echoes of the soul. It encapsulates Bowie's relentless pursuit of artistic evolution, experimentation, and a deep connection with his surroundings. He found in Berlin not just a city, but a muse that fueled his artistic reinvention. 
The echoes of this period resonate in the emotional depths of his work, leaving an indelible mark on his legacy.